guys, Sally here. Uh, we're about to do a little head-to-head -head shootout on air compressors. Um, it's been kind of an interesting situation. I have a Bayer air compressor, which is an absolutely awesome air compressor. Compressor, Don't get me wrong about that. But it's very problematic for me because I have a Mercedes-Benz chassis. And in order to use the Bayer air compressor, it has to be connected by alligator clips to the battery with the engine running. The problem with the Mercedes chassis is that the battery is located under the driver's side floorboard. So getting to that is kind of a pain in the butt. You got to pull out, you know, take out screws, do all this stuff, yada, yada, yada. Great air compressor, but a super problem for me. Plus they're pretty much on the expensive side. Um, so I've been looking for another solution that would actually work. And because, you know, my tires will go up to 80 PSI, I need a pretty capable air compressor. So I was messing around the other day, looking on Amazon, reading reviews, all this kind of stuff. And I looked at two or three different air compressors and I thought, you know, all the other tools that I carry are from Home Depot. They're the Ryobi One, all using the same batteries. So why not check that out? And they've got one that is good up to 160 PSI. And in addition to being able to do um, high pressure, lower volume tires like trucks and bicycles and so forth, they can also do um, high volume, low pressure things like my inflatable footrest, hassock, uh, air mattresses and that kind of stuff. So I thought it might be a pretty good solution. Let me show you what we got. This is a doorstep comparison between the Bayer on the left and the Ryobi one on the right. Here's what the Bayer compressor looks like again on the left. You know, it's obviously really beefy, really well made. It comes with a 30 foot hose. So when you're hooked up to a, a truck engine or whatever, you can get all the way around the vehicle to be able to get to all the tires. Here's the VOB1 on the right. It's actually a much more compact package, even with the battery in the bottom of it. Um, and the thing that's really interesting about this to me is the fact that it is dual purpose. It, it will do everything, you know, whether it's like uh, air mattresses, bicycle tires, truck tires, all that kind of stuff. So I unboxed it this morning and uh, got it out and checked it out. The first thing I did was air up my bicycle tires because I was riding my bike the other day and my front end felt like really squirrely, like kind of wobbly and stuff. So when I went over and checked it out, um, turns out that I was down to like seven and a half pounds of pressure in my front and rear tires. So I aired them up using the Ryobi. Let me show you a couple of details here that I think are pretty cool. So on the left side here, you've got the mode. And when you turn it on, that's also the power button. When you turn it on, it defaults to the high pressure side, which is this one. That's the high pressure hose. And then, you know, we've got accessories that clip into the side there for sports needles and all that kind of stuff. But if you press the mode button again, then it'll switch over to the low pressure side on this side. This is the inflator side, the inflator uh, port, and then that's the deflator port. So you just plug the hose into whichever side you need for that. And then it also shows really clearly here, air mattresses, tires. Um, then what you do is, for, for uh, tires, you thread this air chuck onto your valve stem. And as long as it's turned on, it will immediately read and display here the pressure that it's reading. And then here you plus or minus, pretty much plus for me, um, until you get the air pressure that you, your target air pressure. And then once you do that, you press start stop and it will automatically inflate to that pressure. Now, what I saw this morning between doing the bicycle tires and all of my RV tires is that on the RV, it seems to, even though it says it's inflated, for example, to 75, it really seems to be about 74. That's fine. That's, you know, so totally close enough. And I checked it against my TPMS system uh, to see how that was interpreting the readings compared to the way that the Ryobi was interpreting the readings. So similarly, um, the Bayer has this terrific gauge. Um, it's got a lock on chuck, which is cool. And then it's also got this uh, part here that you push forward if you need to deflate. Uh, and that all works really, really well. But the one downside that I have found with this is I have to run back and forth from wherever the hose is back to the compressor itself to turn it on and off. Um, so that's a bit inconvenient, actually. 
that's the only downside to it, but it is very powerful. It's a, it's a really great unit. And you can look for that to go on sale sometime soon. So if you were somebody you know is interested in a really great compressor with a battery in their vehicle that's easy to get to, I would highly recommend it. In the meantime, I'm traveling with Ryobi. Okay, gang, I wanted to share some final thoughts on the whole Ryobi versus Vier thing. Um, and I actually went back and looked up the price that I paid for the Vier. But I want to introduce you to something else before we get to the pricing issues. So this is the Ryobi one uh inflator that i've had for years i bought it originally for my bicycle because it was like super small easy to use i think i paid like 20 dollars for it now the ryobi price does not include the uh the battery that's just the tool price itself and that's one of the things that i really like about it because i've got uh i think i've got four or five batteries that i travel with and then another one that i leave at the house because i've got a blower there that my uh cleaning service uses periodically so um, I really like the fact that you don't have to buy a battery with every tool, that they're all interchangeable. And the thing that really surprises me, because I don't use tools all that often, is that the, um, the hold time on the lithium batteries is really, really good. I mean, I'm, they, it might be a month or two before I get a tool out and the battery is still fully charged. So that's a really big benefit as far as I'm concerned. So we go from the little tiny one, you know, this one that I just showed you, to the one that I showed you earlier that I just picked up uh, yesterday and compared to the Vier. So the little one, you know, like 20 bucks, maybe 25, can't remember for sure. Uh, the one that I just picked up yesterday was $70, 69 and change. The Vier was over 200, just over 200 with tax and shipping by the time that was all done. The other thing that's really interesting is there's a big difference in weight between the Vier and the Ryobi. So I'm actually offloading a little bit of weight now, which is good because uh, I'm pretty close to being overweight. The rig I'm talking about, just saying. Um, so being able to get any weight out at all is really good as far as I'm concerned. Um, and the uh, the new one from Ryobi takes up much less space than the buyer does as well. So for me, I think the Ryobi is going to be a really good choice. For other people, I think the buyer is a really good choice it's just a matter of what really works for you. And I just kind of wanted to share those last few thoughts around that. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, and always remember to sally forth, live your best life, go out and adventure in whatever way works for you.